So this is about week eight of construction. As you can see, the house coming along really quickly and uh, we're really thrilled to start uh, start the process of, you know, finishing it up. This is about week eight of construction. So let's give you, let's go to the theater room and give you an update. This is about week eight of construction. As you can see, there's a, uh, all the walls have been fully framed and we're moving forward towards, uh, start, we're gonna start adding the wiring required to run all the speakers overhead speakers and bed layer speakers and subwoofer cables and everything. And that's going to come in uh, hopefully pretty soon in the next week or so. So I'll be making another video on that uh, just to show what kind of wiring we do in this uh, theater. As you can see, it's just been framed with two by fours and you know, there has been some progress. I'm going to go over all the walls and, uh, and show you in a little more detail in a moment. I actually needed to bring my own lighting. As, as you can see, it's uh, pretty dim in here. I actually had to bring my own lighting uh, just to get uh, enough light in here because obviously last time you saw a video, there was just blue sky up there, but now we have, uh, we have a roof and we have actually doors. If you look over there at the very front of, the, of this area here. So we have doors here leading out to the outside and pretty much everything is framed. So um, pretty recently I went with my builder over here and we went over exactly where I wanted to have all the wiring put in. This is the wiring for the center channel right here. And I have wiring for my right speaker plus some power over there because it's uh, they have built-in subs which require power and obviously uh, the sub, out, sub outputs there. All the power and stuff is going to be on the baseboard. In other words, they're going to be down low, really, really close here. Again, same goes over here. We also mapped out where the sides, the uh, wide surrounds are gonna be. We 73 inches from the first set of surrounds over there. And of course we have a step on each side now. Uh, in the previous video, there was like a sump pump in here, but now it's covered by this step, which is, uh, you know, removable somewhat, can be removed. And this one I think is a little more permanent on this side. But yeah, I decided to put the I decided to put the surrounds at about uh, 56 inches. So the center of the speakers are going to be 56 inches. That's that's taller than head than head height. I actually used this chair here as a model, and I kind of sat down on it to figure out like roughly about six inches above my head. I mean, this isn't the exact height, but it's just you know it's a chair, so it's a similar height as uh, the theater seats that I'll be using, and I used that as a model and. So yeah, 56 is, this is the uh, second set of surrounds for the rear uh, set of seats. And over here, we're gonna have a set of surrounds. I uh, actually forgot to tell them that we're gonna add a, a, uh, some subs down here as well, but we'll add that later. And here, I'll turn a little more light here. And uh, so yeah, the surrounds are gonna be here, pretty wide, as wide as I can actually have them. There's gonna be one here marked and one over here as well. Another set of surrounds. This over here is quite interesting. This is this is where the rack's gonna go. And this time I'm gonna have a, uh, like a, a real white rack on casters and everything. So it's gonna be buried in here somewhere. It's hard to visualize right now, but it's this is where it's gonna live. Thinking about an 80 inch, thinking about an 80 inch rack, which should be about, about here tall. Hard to see right now, but that's what it's gonna be. So I'm gonna have a, I believe as far as power, we decided to, I'm going to, we're going to bring a dedicated circuit for this, for this entire uh, closet room. I think it's, I think we decided on 30 amps. This rack closet, I'm going to power not only the home theater, but I, I'm going to be running a whole control for system. The several receivers is going to provide power for this rec room that's on this floor, the family room upstairs and the master bedroom upstairs, along with a full uh, home audio system, which I think is pretty simple with these control full control for system. So it's going to be a combination of networking and amplification for the entire house, pretty much. But uh, the primary function of this rack is going to be to power this home theater. So one of my biggest concerns for this room is, is sound, uh, soundproofing the room. I want to keep as much sound. I want this room to be usable, like at all times of the day, like daytime, nighttime, doesn't matter what time. I don't, I don't necessarily want to blast you know, this room, like, you know, turn it up all the way to 11 all the time, but I definitely want it to be where I can use it uh, as much as I want without disturbing the entire family. I'm currently looking at some soundproofing options and uh, I've looked at the whole, like, uh, two, 
uh, um, using uh, double layer drywall and stuff, which uh, here is quite quite good. Uh, drywall, maybe that green glue stuff, but I've actually uh, I've seen some videos uh, that question the effectiveness of the green glue and how necessary it is. So I might just do a, uh, I might actually use like a carpet glue. I actually saw a really good video, I'll put a, I'll put a link on that, where you use two layers of dry, uh, drywall, but in between you sandwich a, a layer of this carpet glue stuff, which is just as tacky or similarly tacky as the green glue. So it'll probably, it provides the same benefit at, at a fraction of the cost. And I'm really good, I saw a really good video, I can't remember the name of the channel, but I'll put a link of it up here on the card. Um, so yeah, definitely want to really, I'm really considering, um, we kind of designed this room so that it would be as, uh, as quiet as possible. And obviously in order to soundproof a room effectively, you need mass, you need, you need mass separating the sound from other walls. So uh, I think two layers of drywall and, you know, pretty much half of this room is reinforced concrete which doesn't get much more soundproof than that. So if I can combine the two layers of drywall plus the, the reinforced concrete on, on two of the main walls, I think will be good as far as soundproofing, but there's still another problem and I'll show you that now. My biggest concern is the door. So I'm currently toying with looking for different options as far as what door to get for this room. My, my builder came up with a, this company, ISO, I can't remember, I'll put a link of it, uh, it's a soundproofing door, which is which which is used in like um, the studios and the like, and uh, it's a it's like two and a half inches thick. So it's actually a door that's meant for soundproofing. And I'm actually looking at uh, I'm looking at quotes on that. It's a little expensive, but I might actually end up getting it. Another option is using like a fiberglass outdoor door, which has weather stripping on the sides and stuff. So I think that might be. Uh, the most cost-effective option would actually provide pretty good soundproofing. I definitely want to get something that's going to work, you know, and if I have to pay a little more to get that, then I'll, I'll do it. But there, you know, there are obviously limits. I really appreciate your feedback. If you know anything of these soundproof, these really thick soundproofing doors, is it worth the extra money? Because there, it's it's, you know, the the outdoor fiberglass door is about a fraction of the cost. And now there we have where we're going to have the uh, the height speakers uh, located. So. I'm gonna have one here, pretty much here, uh, above the above the the first row of seats, and another one that's right, kind of in between the the first and second row, and the last set would be you can kind of see it here if I move the light. That's the last set of speakers that's that's going to be slightly behind the second row of seats, so it should be pretty effective. When I set up this home theater, I didn't really want to just have a theater that was just one seat was good and the rest were crappy. I wanted to have a really well-rounded theater experience for any for all the seats in this room. That's why I wanted to get a wide theater and uh, plenty of seats, and I just want everybody to have a good experience. So as far as the height channels, I should mention, I'm, gonna, I'm still on the fence of whether, because I already have a bunch of Definitive Technology speakers, I'm still thinking about what I'm gonna actually use. So I'm, I'm gonna either go Golden Ear or Definitive Technology. Definitive technology will be a lot cheaper because I already have a bunch of speakers that I can reuse for this theater and just move them from the old theater to this one and just buy, some, buy the extra ones that I'm going to need. Uh, obviously, this is a more substantial build. I'm going to have 11 channels of bed layer uh, plus another six overhead. So then we're talking about a much bigger uh, theater, much bigger bigger project, more you know a lot more a uh, lot more speakers, a lot more com lot more complexity involved. But yeah, I'm thinking about getting, uh, as far as for the ceiling speakers, I'm thinking about getting, the Definitive makes these, uh, these uh, bipolar ones that are kind of at an angle, or I guess it would be like this. So you have a set of speakers here. I thought it would just be better. I don't know if anybody knows any information about these. I'll put a, uh, I'll put a picture of them. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have, like I feel like it would, uh, having this little, have speakers on each side would kind of allow a little more spread of the information overhead. I thought it'd be more immersive that way. Sound off if you know, if you, I don't know, maybe I'm the first one that ever, th first person to ever think about using them for overhead uh, tight channels. Maybe I'm crazy, but if not, if I don't go for that, I'll get a more customary, like normal, you know, overhead, you know, in, in ceiling. I'm going in ceiling for sure, that, that I know. So I'm either going to get the, do, do these bipolar in ceilings or uh, more, more, more normal in ceilings, either for Golden Ear. Golden Ear makes a set of very similar set, but Golden Ear speakers are more expensive and I'm trying to keep the cost a little low, but. We'll see. This is a this is my office. Uh, I'm also going to have another home theater in here, but I'm going to base this more on satellite speakers. I have a bunch of little definitive technology satellites that I'm going to reuse. 
you know, so similar to the theater room, we kind of mapped out where things are going to go. Like this is where there's going to be a TV hookup here to go on the wall and, you know, speakers, connections, power connections and stuff. So yeah, I guess more boring stuff there. Again, the surrounds are going to be 56 inches, the same height as in, this, in the uh, theater room. Back surrounds as well. And we're going to have height. Um, we are going to have, uh, in this room, I'm actually going to do like uh, front heights and rear heights. So I'm actually going to use uh, satellite speakers on the mounted on the back wall and then on the front wall and kind of see how that works out. So this is going to be a fully like satellite build with just little satellite speakers. And just to show you don't need massive speakers to have an awesome home theater experience. So this is a little update on the rec room. So this room pre presents some problems of its own simply because the TV is going to be on this wall and I want to have a home theater in this room. So I'm going to have to use, so this room is going to be a little different. I'm going to do sur ceiling, uh, surround speakers on the ceiling, but special, special speakers that are kind of angled, uh, at, that are at an angle. So it sort of mimics the, it's better than just having the, sh the shower effect of speakers pointing straight down. These are going to be at a slight angle and it's going to kind of mimic having normal speakers. Same goes for the back surrounds. And these, and uh, I'm going to have, I'm thinking about my new two inch TV on this wall, along with some on wall speakers kind of flanking them on each side. Should be pretty cool and pretty effective uh, at uh, giving me what I need for this room, which is just basically like a hangout room. I'm putting, we're, we're valuing aesthetics over function in this room. Like the, the home theater comes second to this room. This is more like a playroom, a hangout room, a room where you just come down, listen to music, entertain. I'm not really as concerned about you know the, the the perfectness of the home theater system in this room, but it's going to be pretty good. This is the guest room in the basement, which I'm going to use as more like a you know immersive music room. So I'm going to have an Atmos system down here, uh, but mostly for listening to music and you know some light gaming maybe. And most of my gaming is going to be in my office that you saw earlier, but I will I will do some gaming in here. So I'm going to put a TV on this wall and a couple of uh, unfortunately the. Uh, uh, the tower speakers that I'm going to use, which I, should, which I think are my Golden Ear tra uh, Trenton 2s, they're going to go here and here. It's not ideal because of the door, but it is what it is. I'm going to maybe use some treatments in this room to, to clean up the, you know, make it a little better for a stereo experience. So I'm going to have my Macintosh system in this room as well. So this is basically going to be my like new uh, audio listening room. We also laid out this room for, for speakers. I'm not going to bore you with that again. So I know this is this stuff that's not terribly interesting. I don't, I don't have a lot going on, but I definitely wanted to cover all aspects of the, of the theater, of building a theater. And that includes the boring stuff like framing and stuff. You know, this is part of the process. You can't, um, I don't want to skip all this stuff because, you know, I want to have a, a series on my channel that shows like from the very beginning, bare walls, absolutely nothing to like framing, to wiring, and to like, you know, installing speakers and installing drywall, what I'm going to do with soundproofing. I want, I want to show all the aspects of the theater build, and that includes boring stuff like this, like measuring, you know, figuring out where the speakers are going to go so you can run the wires to them later on, and that kind of stuff. So these, these are the things you need to think about when you're designing your home theater, and I just want to convey that to you all as best as I can. This is, this, is my, this is the plan that I had for this uh, video series. Anyway, if you really enjoyed this video, it'd be really great if you can give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel a lot. Consider subscribing, you know, you, if, you wanna, if you wanna see more update videos on how the room's going on and all that, it'd be really great. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.